Hello, this is Mark Smith with Family Tree Counseling Associates. I'm coming at you from Myrtle Beach this week. I'm sitting out on the porch uh, near the ocean. I, I told you I, I was growing a, a sea captain's beard, so I got my sea captain's hat. But I, I had a little video I wanted to share with you uh, this week. It's called uh, Top 10 Ways to Never Be Heard by Your Husband. David Letterman. I guess this week announced that he was going to retire. So when I had 10 items on this uh, particular topic, I thought it might be fun to have a top 10 list. So we'll start with number 10 ways of never being heard by your husband would be don't put your order in. If you went to a, a nice restaurant and you were hungry and you wanted a, a meal really bad, but if you never put your order in, then no matter what, uh, you would sit there hungry. You have to have a voice and you have to make a decision in order for you to get your needs met. And in a very similar way, some uh, codependents, they're not fully in touch with what they need and they don't communicate those needs to their to their husband in a way that can be heard and so they just sort of fly right by him uh, he, he doesn't have the slightest clue what she thinks she's ordered uh, which she really hasn't even asked for and um, so in this video I, I'm I have a sort of a prototypical couple in mind and that is a more of a codependent wife and more of a counter-dependent husband. So the codependent wife would be more uh, lower entitled, lower self-esteem, insecure, uh, lacking assertiveness skills type of a gal. And a counter-dependent man would be by nature controlling, uh, self-absorbed, oblivious, highly independent and controlling. So, obviously, uh, many couples aren't configured that way, but it is sort of a, a prototype for our culture, and we see a lot of couples like that. So, I apologize if the lighting isn't just so today. I'm, I'm running out of daylight here, and it's sort of cloudy and stormy. So, so uh, if, if you don't put your order in, you're not going to get your needs met. And husbands, too, can be trained. But uh, a wife needs to have uh, a, an effective voice. I guess really what this video is about is having an effective voice where you can be heard and your legitimate needs can, you know, be addressed. So the number nine uh, reason to never be heard uh, by your husband would be making soft suggestions rather than making bold requests. And the thing about these, these counter-dependent fellows is uh, making a soft suggestion is not going to work because they're not going to pick up on it. You know, they're, they're strong, driving, opinionated, uh, needy fellows who um, have their own agendas. So anybody who wants something from them is going to have to be pretty darn articulate, pretty direct, and pretty bold. And they're going to have to say, this is what I want, and this is how I want it. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and um, that's, that's how you do business with a, with a fellow like that. But if you make soft suggestions, um, you're not going to get the results that you would like to get. Um, many times in, in therapy, in group therapy, a codependent will be trying to give feedback to another group member. And instead of just telling them, hey, I see this in your life and this, this is something you might consider, that they, they ask a, a softer question that, that sort of hints around at, hey, this might be an issue for you. And it, it rarely, it just gets, gets the, the person talking, but they don't really learn or, or uh, you know, benefit enough from, from the feedback. 
So, um, so the uh, the number eight uh, reason to uh, uh, <clears throat> that you're not going to get your needs met from your husband is uh, very similar to, to number nine, and that is uh, sometimes codependents drop hints, and, <laughs> and uh, uh, these counterdependent fellows I'm talking about. Dropping hints is never, ever, ever going to work with them. They're not going to pick up on any hints. Um, uh, codependents who are other-centered and sensitive, uh, they very well may pick up on a hint. They're, they're good hint picker-uppers on, if that's a phrase. But counter-dependents, like I say, they, they're pretty thick-skinned, and subtle hints are never going to work. The number uh, seven reason... Or, or way, not so much reason, but way that um, you're not going to get your needs met by your husband would be uh, resorting to sniper fire. And I think you know what I mean when I'm talking about sniper fire. Sniper fire is little, little snippy comments meant to draw just a little bit of blood trying to sort of provoke the man into a conversation. And initially, these comments surprised the man because in the first three examples, the, the codependent wife is still pretty cooperative, pretty passive, pretty nice, pretty sweet, pretty adoring. But we've, we've turned the corner here with this particular example. And uh, uh, they're starting to, you know, show their anger. And uh, when, when that happens, it's, it's going to feel like sniper fire, I, I assure you, uh, fellas. So this is anger that's been hidden on the back burner for, for years. And uh, so she, she used to think he was the most interesting. You know that commercial where it has this really old fart um, doing all this cool stuff? And he says, he's the most interesting man alive. And... He drinks some beer or whatever, Mexican beer or whatever. But, you know, uh, the woman who marries a counterdependent actually did think that she married a pretty exciting, interesting man. And now she sort of thinks she married a jerk instead because she started, she started to sour. She, she started to um, shift her, her paradigm as to who she is, who he is to her because she has all this negative energy saved up uh, from years of, of not really being assertive enough. The number six way to never be heard to ensure that you're not going to be heard by your husband is to nag, whine, belittle, emasculate, and or spiral in hopelessness. None of these work at all. And you certainly have uh, turned the corner if you're doing any of these, um, uh, that energy, that negative energy has to come out somewhere. But when it comes out this way, it's almost like there's been an, an infection in the wound. And you feel uh, the codependent feels uh, victimy. And frankly, consciously or unconsciously, they're looking to sort of punish the oblivious, offending, counterdependent husband. And the problem is he's going to feel sort of unfairly attacked. He's going to get defensive. He'll probably he'll probably rage at you. And if he doesn't rage at you, um, what he'll do is he will um, uh, just go off. You know what he'll do? He'll go off in his man cave. He'll he'll grab up his marbles and go play you know somewhere else for a while. So. Uh, this, this gives you a place to put your negative energy, but it doesn't get you heard, it doesn't get you respected, and it doesn't get your needs met. So uh, the number five way to never be heard by your husband would be to triangle, triangle to anybody who will listen. And by triangling, I mean you and your husband have issues, and then you ventilate to a third party. And if you feel like a victim, then you're going to have a lot of negative energy and you, you're going to look to uh, offload that negative energy. 
And when people come into our therapy office and they're venting, we, we stop them pretty quickly because it's not therapy, it's not helpful. They need to hold on to their anger and not let go of it. Because if they let go of it, then they don't have it to go to war with the husband, which they're, they're going to need that energy to do business with him by being assertive. So if you offload it by talking to a girlfriend, to your mother, to your sister, hopefully not uh, the worst the worst uh, uh, examples of this is is when uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, triangling happens to one of the kids I mean even if it's an older kid it's just it's not a, appropriate and that brings us to the the next uh, way to never be heard by your husband and that is to engage in what I call victim mentality uh, therapy where you actually think you're going to fix the problem, um, but you actually make it worse. And you make it worse by going into a therapist office who doesn't understand that there are no victims in marriage and there are no bad guys. And it's really not about the marriage, it's about your family of origin. So if, if, if you go in to see that therapist, the husband is going to be sitting in the waiting room with a, with a hangdog look on his face and he doesn't want to be there because he knows what it's going to be. What it's going to be is he's the puppy that pooped on the rug and the therapist and the wife both have newspapers and he's going to get whacked on the nose and he's going to find out just how many ways he's failed as a man and how many ways he's failed as a husband and he, he probably already knows those things but he really doesn't want to know. He doesn't want them elaborated on at 150 bucks an hour um, to be told those things. And that's what he thinks that he's going to get. And many times uh, that's what he has gotten uh, in previous trips to a therapist's office. But when they come, a couple comes into our office, the, the husbands find out there are no bad guys. We don't beat up on men any more than we beat up on women or uh, we're just trying to find what's true and if a wife has married a husband who isn't meeting her needs that's 50 percent about the wife why'd she pick a fella who who doesn't have a clue how to meet her needs why would she do that well she did that on purpose because she didn't get her needs met growing up either so when uh, wives find out, or, in, or codependents, or whoever feels victimized, when, when they find out that there's no victims, it's, it actually is a wonderful thing because it empowers them. Because now they have the power to fix the problem. The problem is their unresolved wounds from their childhood. They can work on that. They can have some measure of control over that, but they're, they're finding that they don't have enough control over, um, you know, the husband as much as they would like. And the husband's issues, and they're, they're just filled with all this frustration and negativity. So um, uh, we create, in our offices, we create a safe environment where um, nobody is belittling or, uh, you know, being overly critical or being mean or being reactive. And uh, it's a safe environment where both parties are respected and heard. And uh, a lot of really effective communication can happen then. The uh, number three way a wife will never get heard by her husband is to set boundaries that don't have any consequences. That's like, that's like having laws that you can break the law, but there is no jail. There are no fines. So um, that's not going to work. Um, there, there has to be a consequence when boundaries are set. And, a, and a, 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 many times I've had a, a codependent come in and they say, well, I tried setting boundaries and it didn't work. Well, the truth is that if you set boundaries effectively, it works every time, 100% of the time. And a boundary is something that's understood ahead of time. You, you know uh, what the speed limit is. 
you understand that it's uh, a certain, you know, say 65 miles an hour or 55 or whatever it is. It's posted. It's understood ahead of time. They didn't spring that on you at the last minute. Um, and uh, a boundary can be shared very professionally, very pleasantly. There doesn't have to be a lecture or any criticism involved. And a boundary does have consequences that have some teeth to them. You know, when, when I get pulled over and I just get a warning, well, uh, it doesn't really make much of an impact. You know, I go, whew, <laughs> and I probably go right back to doing what I was doing. But um, if I have a ticket for like $185, you know, I'm gonna stop doing what I was doing to get that ticket, cause, cause that really, that that hurts to get that bit out of you for no good reason, other than you're driving too fast. So, a codependent needs to um, think ahead of time as to what might be some reasonable, natural consequences for anybody who steps on you. Um, an example of this is, is we have a boundary. If, if somebody doesn't give us 24 hours notice, then we always charge them the full fee and we let them know that ahead of time. Now, if you're sick or your child is sick, that's one thing. We're not going to charge you for that. But if, if you have to work late, we're going to charge you. But we're not mad at you. Um, and we're like, gee, I'm sorry that you have to pay that. But that's something we have to do to protect our time. So it's shared in a very pleasant and a very kind manner, but yet it, it's it's a you know to pay that much you know big chunk of money when you didn't benefit from it is hard, but it's it's understood ahead of time. The number two way to ensure that you never get heard by your husband would be to cut off emotionally. If you cut off emotionally because you haven't been heard and you're just filled with venom, you're filled with hurt and anger and bitterness, then you're going to emotionally cut off from your husband and then uh, your heart's gonna shut down. And if your heart shuts down, I would hope, and in almost all cases, your body shuts down. And then when your body shuts down, all of a sudden you got your husband's attention. But is he going to automatically go to, well, maybe I haven't been listening to my wife very well, and maybe I need to um, give her more attention and, and really hear her out and seek to meet her needs. Maybe that's the problem. These fellows I'm talking about, they're not going to come to that. They're going to blame it on you. <laughs> they're going to blame it on you and say, well, you know, she's got, you know, some kind of sexual problem and she's just, you know, withholding and unloving and not affectionate. And he's not going to uh, make it about himself. He's going to blame you for it. And if he has abandonment issues, he's going to probably rage and be real pouty for days at a time because, you know, that needy little little person inside him is not getting his needs met. Uh, so, so cutting off is a dangerous thing because it creates such an emotional distance in the marriage that um, makes it dangerous. So somebody else could come along and give your, uh, you're already, uh, you know, uh, criticizing and nagging and whining and belittling and emasculating. And some gal comes along, starts praising him and thinking he's the most interesting man alive, then uh, that's going to feel awful good to him. And, and many times affairs really don't have to do with sex, they have to do with a man uh, or a woman uh, uh, thirsting for approval. In the in the Bible, when it it warns the uh, married young man against the wayward woman, it doesn't say in Proverbs, "Look out for the hot chick." It says, "Beware of flattering lips." So, what's going to get you? in your marriage is if, if needs aren't being, being met both ways, really, what's going to become an issue is um, uh, somebody flirting and thinking you're cool and, you know, pinging you across the room with uh, energy, and that can lead to trouble. 
And finally, the number one way you can ensure that you're never going to be hurt by your husband is if you rage at him. So if you rage at your husband, um, it's not going to work because right underneath his pretty pretty massive psychological defense mechanisms, uh, there is a mechanism called shame. And shame, if, if you criticize your husband this much, he's going to hear this much if he's got shame. And these counter-dependent fellows have a lot of shame. So if you, if you criticize him this much, you know, it's going to be bigger than... You know, I can show you on this, this screen, it's going to be a huge reaction. So if you rage at, at, at him, he's going to rage back at you, and it's going to be an ugly, scary, awful, nightmarish scenario. So I cannot, I cannot recommend that. So I'm going to um, uh, read this, this last section here that um, talks about uh, wh where to go from here. So... Uh, I say, okay, uh, you know, this is y'all speaking. Okay, Mr. Smarty Pants Therapist, uh, what does work? You told us what doesn't work, and it's sort of depressing, but what does work? And what I wrote was, what works is shifting your focus off your husband and shifting it to your own unresolved childhood issues, which is really why you picked a man to begin with. Unresolved issues of being overly controlled, overly criticized, shamed, abandoned, or abused in some way, shape, or form. And I don't necessarily mean, um, you know, sexually abused or physically abused. I mean, anytime a parent is overly harsh or doesn't hear you. You know, if you grow up not being heard because there were seven kids in the family or because dad was scary or because mom was busy, that you didn't get heard, you're going to, I guarantee you, you're going to pick a fella who doesn't hear you. And that's Mother Nature's way of provoking you to get healthy and to get a voice. So as you gain that voice and as you proactively heal your childhood wounds through your own recovery process, you will develop, develop a very clear, powerful, non-reactive, articulate voice that will work like magic with your now more humble and less defensive, much less defensive, and more open-minded husband because he's gotten in recovery too. And he's come to sessions, and as soon as he gets defensive, I point that out. I say, Joe... You're being just a little defensive now. Your, your shame is translating here and you're interrupting. And, and he gets a sense of, you know, what that is. And, and he works on his shame issues from his child. See, he picked you so that you would get to that critical, nagging, uh, belittling stage. Because he had somebody do that to him growing up. So... You want to meet that fellow, that humble fellow, who's teachable, who's non-reactive, who is non-defensive. He got a set of ears, and uh, they work real good. And so if you develop that voice in a pleasant, non-reactive uh, way, and he develops that set of ears, then, uh, then you got something. So, again, I I'm sorry if the uh, lighting was a bit of a problem. I kept do dodging in and dodging out to get the light. Uh, but uh, I hope you uh, benefit from the video, and I hope it spoke to you, and I hope my sea captain <laughs> didn't, didn't uh, cause it to be ridiculous. And uh, uh, if you haven't uh, been on our channel yet, Family Tree Counseling, then do join that. We've got 211 videos about just about everything related to relationships and recovery and emotional healing. And also, I do have five, I have six books actually available on our website about abandonment issues and shame and marital issues. I've got a book on male counter-dependency, ladies. You want to read about your husband? It's called A Punch in the Mouth from a Friend. So thank you for watching the video, and uh, God bless you.